Hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Warwood. A twilight racing card at Ascot. That's going to be a feature of summer Wednesday racing here at headquarters. We're expecting a very hot and sunny day, 38 degrees Celsius. The track to be a good four and the rail will be out at 13 metres. Race number one at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 3.15. It's the summer twilight racing handicap over 1,100 metres. In replay, let's go to Belmont Park and the trial of Queen of Soul. Out wider is Miss Cairo along with the Shyster who's in the middle and back on the inside Queen of Soul. At the 250 metre mark it's Fame City on the outside just in front. Joining in quickly though is Amber Mamba. Amber Mamba has swept up and taken the lead from Fame City. Flashing home from the back of the field is Queen of Soul. Have a look at Queen of Soul with giant strides for Ben Patterson, Simon Miller and Queen of Soul. An impressive win. It raced it's taken a little while for Queen of Soul to get to the racetrack in a competitive event. It's had four trials, uh, two recently, and we saw in replay she accelerated really, really nicely to beat Amber Mamba by a length. It's a half-sister of Queen Bay that raced by the same connections, and I think the blinkers on first time are a sign of intent from Simon Miller in what is a competitive race going with the bottom one, Queen of Soul. From number two, Snippy Reese, who's second up, on Wednesday for Durant and Pike. Uh, won a trial before going to Ascot on the 30th of November, was beaten two and a half lengths that day. Second fastest sectionals in the race, despite over racing a little bit. Number four is Amelia Bedelia, another horse that over raced last time out, but still got the job done. That was at Northern at the end of November. Only just beat the full quid who's been going around in lots and lots of maidens. So I'm not sure about the, the uh, the form there. And then number three, intriguing run of this, Weapon Sun. Only had the one competitive start, was $10 to, uh, to win that race back in February. Finished seven lengths behind Nakovi, but both of its trials either side of that have been good. Beat uh, Rio Del Mar by nearly two lengths and then led all of the way in the recent trial, winning by over seven lengths for Midnight Blue. Expected to be on the speed, having settled back on its only competitive start. Top selection in race number one is number seven, Queen of Soul. To beat two, Snippy Miss, four, Amelia Bedelia, and three, Weapon Sun. Race number two at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 3.50. It is the Western Race Picks Maiden over 1,000 metres in replay. Let's have a look at the latest really good trial of Time to Sizzle. End of the straight, 400 metres to go. Don't argue, Buster back down to the inside. Peking Galar fourth and all in red. Secret Pearl, nick of time out wider. Uncle Dick Blackwing and at the tail of the field is Zingano. Down the straight though and taking charge and racing away is Time to Sizzle. And another impressive trial coming up for Time to Sizzle. It's going to cruise home to victory and win by about five or six extending. Second... Time to Sizzle was a beaten favourite on both of her starts late in the two-year-old season. Went round at $2.50 in both of those Belmont contests, but the trials have been really, really good. Won at Lark Hill by seven and a quarter lengths over Drama Free, and then we saw in replay the Lark Hill trial where it beat uh, Peking Galar by nearly six and a half lengths. Jumps on the bunny here, I think, won't be too far away. The earmuffs go on pre-race for the first time. Chris Parnham sticks, he's ridden this horse in both of her starts. I think Time to Sizzle will be raking her maiden. She's the best bet on the card. Goes on top from number three, Modern Times. It'll be first up on Wednesday for Lindsay Smith and Peter Hall. Won its trial down at Lark Hill as well on the 2nd of January, uh, December rather, by just under a length from Due West. It's just had the one competitive start. Was beaten two lengths by Bogart in the same race contested by Time to Sizzle. Number six is an interesting runner, that's Pip, has drawn really wide here. Gate number 13 of 13 may come into 12, depending on what the scratchings are like. Has finished uh, second and third in its runs this campaign behind We've Got Dreams and This Will Test You. Actually got closer to This Will Test You than any of the horses did on Saturday. And then down the bottom is the emergency. Number 13, Gotham Motor. William Pike takes over from Paul Harvey. Blinkers on first time. Tong Tai off first time as well. If uh, he gets into the field, will certainly be a chance. Top selection in race number two is number nine. Top time to sizzle to beat three modern times, six pip and 13 got a motor. Race number three at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 4.20. It's the Tab Touch Better Your Bet handicap over 1,000 metres in replay. Let's take a look at the Lark Hill trial win of Double Jeopardy appear to be, uh, there seems to be one missing and that looks to be Kimono. End of the straight, they run inside the 400 metre mark, Kelvin leads the way, tackled on the outside now and headed and passed by Double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy takes the lead. Kelvin trying to kick, damn ready to the outside, Pacadale comes up four wide, but it is Double Jeopardy in front, Kelvin trying to respond, Double Jeopardy's in the lead, Kelvin kicked. Double Jeopardy is set to tackle his first midweek race 
since he arrived in Western Australia. His last start was in a 64 plus event behind Dammy George. He was only beaten three and a quarter lengths that day. Thought the trial was pretty good. Uh, Chris Graham rode him in that trial. He uh, rides them on Wednesday. Uh, first up off 158 days off that trial, win 59 kilos, double jeopardy. Does look well rated in this contest. Goes on top from number two, Nabilian. Won three starts ago on Melbourne Cup Day. What a story that was. And has placed in two subsequent Ascot races since then, including a graduation event last time out behind Zanaze. This horse will be running on very strongly at the end of 1,000 metres. Interesting runner is number five, Classy Lassie. It's now back with Jake Casey. Spent a couple of uh, starts with his father, Sean. But uh, Jake was the trainer when this horse won on the 12th of June at Belmont. That was on a heavy eight, so there is a little bit of a query there. First up, but does claim down to 54 and a half kilos and will be on speed for sure. And then number nine, Cosmic Eyes for Gary Crispin and Sean McGrony. Placed two starts ago in a class five. Was a little bit uh, unlucky last start in a class three. Stays in class three grade here. Would not surprise at all, but has drawn eight of nine. Top selection in race number three is number one, Double Jeopardy, to beat two Nobilium, five Classy Lassie and nine Cosmic Eyes. Race number four at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at five o'clock. It is the budget car and truck rental handicap over 2,100 metres in replay. Let's go down the highway to Bunbury and the maiden win of Drop the Orange. Ball. Going for home though, Marks in led as they'd come into the straight at the 300, two or three lengths, Jolly Odd. Down the outside, drop the orange, is starting to make up good ground. Aura Sky back towards the rail, hard to see, starting to run on from Dreamy Ellis. Drop the orange, Marks in. Aura Sky down near the inside with 100 left to go. Marks in trying to rally, drop the orange with the neck in front though. It's drop the orange, drop the orange wins it. From Drop the Orange is the half-brother of the listed winning stayer Jackpot Prince. Used to race in the same colours as Drop the Orange. And I thought he did a good job at Bunbury to break his maiden. Was pretty strong through the line, justifying favouritism at $2.50. Aura Sky was also in that race. I think he's got Aura Sky's measure here. 58 and a half kilos after the claim for Jay McNaught. So just half a kilo more than that Bunbury maiden. I think Drop the Orange might be an improving source, certainly over this type of trip. Goes on top from number six, Winifer, who will surely be positive, uh, po popular here. He's had uh, three play starts in a row, a class one, a class three, and then last time out in a graduation handicap on a Saturday behind British Bessie over a similar trip to this. Maybe she's a bit of a non-winner. She has had the three minor placings from nine starts, but uh, she does get a very good opportunity this midweek. Number three is Cool Frost. Six days ago, finished just just behind Doc Fryer from the Durant Yard and William Pike. Uh, on the quick turnaround, he has placed in each of its last two starts. And then number four, Apparition, was pretty keen on this galloping in that Doc Fryer race six days ago, but he was very, very disappointing. Beaten $2.80. I don't think there was that many excuses. Probably was running a little bit closer than he has been in recent starts, but uh, other than that, it's hard to find an excuse for him. Top selection in race number four is number one, Drop the Orange. To beat six Winifat, three Cool Frost, and four apparitions.